Welcome back. Hey, thank you guys for coming. Yes, we are at episode 12. We made it 12. <laughs> and it, this episode is, we're, we're just going to share some of the ways that we've taken responsibility for our entrepreneurial journey. And that really like translates to our lifestyle and yeah. not our work style. So tell everyone what we've been up to lately. Well, I, we just got back from a trip from Arizona. Um, we went to our niece's graduation and it was our son's birthday act the same week. So we were actually able to, to do a, a double double is what we'd say. You know, it's just like a, in an outburger, you get a double double. So uh, yeah. we were able to uh, go down there and enjoy it. Uh, our weather hasn't been the best right now. It's been a little bit cooler. And so it was nice to get down to some sun and some warm weather. and. Uh, it was nice. We had a great time down there, visit with some friends and family, got to see some old, old friends that we haven't seen in quite some time, and uh, it was a lot of fun. I think the kids had fun, and uh, definitely our one of our friends here, Paul, let us uh, use his house while we were down there. Beautiful that, home. Oh, my Thank word. you so much, yes, Paul. Fountain Hill. It was just absolutely amazing, and we stayed there, and the kids had a great time. We had a heated hot tub. A lot of pool tub, time. A lot of pool time. Uh, and just, you know, a relaxed time. It was nice to get away from work. And one of the things that we really want to talk to you about is like your work life balance. And um, I know a lot of us don't have that. And I know that's one of an issue or a, it was an issue for us for a long time. It's like we were really focused work, 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 work. And then, you know, you just realize that as you get older, that the work is always there. You know, it, it seems like it is at least. And uh, we need to make sure that we're balancing that time with our family, with our my wife and with our kids and with our friends and everything else like that. So it's, it's, it's really a, a, a balancing act. And when I say that, it's like there's always something that can be done at work and there's always something that we can be calling. There's always something we can be doing. But every day it's like that. So you have to really take that work balance life and, you know, uh, being in groups that we're in like awake and some other ones that we're into too, uh, our spinning wheels group. That was always awesome too, is that we need to take that time to make sure that we're filling our self back up with what's going on because we put out so much, uh, that we sometimes don't take enough in back in. So we're trying to re make sure that we're doing that. So I, I was kidding around last year and said, I think we were gone for almost three months last year. Um, and it wasn't all personal thing that we're doing. No, there was a lot of, a lot of business and work trips and everything that we're doing. But as we're getting into our business in our 25th year, I think we talked about, um, we need to take that time out to refill our cups back up and our kids and our family and our friends. And this is one of the ways we get to do it. So being an entrepreneur, sometimes we can, we can work that schedule that we want to. We're in control of our schedule. I mean, at the end of the day, as much as it feels like you are not in control of your schedule, you truly are in control of your schedule. You might need to make some different decisions. You might need to not accept everything that's coming your way or set some standards, but it's, it's true that you get to choose. You know, and we all think sometimes we can't because we have this really important group that's coming up or we have something else like that. But if we had a death in a family or we have a family member that was dying and they were on their last bed, we'd be right there on their side, be it if it's here or it's in another state. And we don't want to get to a point that we have to have that emergency happen for us to take that time off. And so there's so many of our friends and so many other people that we work with in our industry and other industries too, they're like, oh, I could just never take off that time. Or it's the end of the month and I'll, I'll use one of my friends, Lane, you know, it's the end of the month. We have to get those sales going in there. Yeah. But you know, sometimes you come to that burnout point or you come to that point that you're just like, I need some time away and you do it no matter what. So we're purposely taking more time off and purposely taking more trips to better ourselves and to uh, come back filled. Like um, when we came back from our first Awaken trip, uh, Stephen made a, a, an observation to Athena, Athena and said, hey, you know what happened to Charlie? He came back and he's just like, you know, totally different. And going to these different events and things like that, we get our cups filled back up. And I keep saying our cups because sometimes it's easier to uh, give you an illustration of when your cup is empty, you don't have anything left into it. And when it's full, you have a lot to give and that's how we come back and that's how we come back energized for our team and how we can come back for our family and our friends and things like that. So like when we're filled, we can fill everybody else back up. We're the, we're the big pitcher and they're the cups and we're filling their cups up. And when the pitcher's empty, we need to refill our cup, our pitcher. Yeah. You know, what was going on with you when we were younger about this like intense desire to just stay at work. Like I have to work, I have to do this, I have to do that because 
That was, that's a mindset that I think that a lot of entrepreneurs, especially when they get in early in the game, they feel like they have to do X in order for Y to happen. Even when we had a team behind us that was capable of handling a lot of stuff, there was still this intrinsic, like, no, it's got to be me. And so what well, do you we think? We were the what... bottleneck. We were the bottleneck because we figured nobody's going to do it as good as us. And <clears throat> when nobody can do it as good as us, we set that mindset to it. And then nobody is going to do it better us because we're, our expectations are this and we're not letting them, we're not letting them even so try in some, some yeah. cases. You know, I mean, it's just like, you know, you figure you have to be here for this big group. You have to be here for this stuff. But when your team, when you're not there and the big group comes up, like we do a lot of airline diverts. So I'll, I'll bring up airline diverts. Um, I was always on every divert that was there. And I don't care what time it was. They call me. I'd run out and go to divert. And I'll still go help with the diverts here now. But once teaching Stephen how to do the diverts, it, 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 he did a great job. He did he did an excellent job. They, they liked him. And it was easy for him to pick it up. He just had to learn it from me. But I, sometimes I was unwilling to give that that task away because I thought I could do it better than everybody else. But they could do it just fine. It's yeah. our mindset is where we're at is saying, hey, we can't afford to have anybody screw this up. But uh, I'll bring up Paul Landis again. Paul had taught me a long time ago. And he says, hey, Charlie, if you don't let them make small mistakes, they'll never be able to ha handle a big mistake. And we want to make sure that we're letting them make some of the mistakes or make some of the things that are going on in their life because they're never going to grow unless we let them have those chances or opportunities to to make it happen successfully. Or if they have a problem that uh, they make a small mistake, it, they're going to learn from it. And we're not going to throw it in their face. We're just going to say, what would we have done differently? What could we do differently to make this happen? Then you're never going to be able to grow past where you're at now unless you let them do those functions, uh, let them make some mistakes or, or, or go out there and show how they can mm -hmm. be sometimes more successful than you were because yes. they're outside the box and they don't see it every day like we do. So we have lots of team members who come in and say, hey, you know, we can do it this way, this way, this way. And we're like, wow, why wouldn't we think of that 20 years ago? How, how is that there? Uh, so. You know, and something else about that is that I'm sure that there are plenty of things that have been tried over time in in different organizations. But what, one thing that I remember is, well, yeah, we've tried that before, but we're a different company today, so that might work this time around. Instead of been there, done that, we're not doing it. It's just kind of like remember that, hey, was the culture the same? Was the way that we did operations the same? Well, does it sound like it could work now? And consider it. It's really important to be calling out greatness in the the people that you've put in charge in the organization to run that shift or run that department. And when you're not calling out greatness, they can feel that. They know that you don't trust them. They can sense that energy from you just like a baby can sense whether or not their parents are happy or where their parents are stressed. It's the same thing with the team and the people around you. And you want to be calling out greatness in those individuals because the opposite of calling out greatness is calling out the fool. And, uh, you know, that, that could look like, oh, I knew you were going to screw it up. Like, that that's never should be a place where if you're, if you're planning on growing leadership and uplifting your team, then you always want to be mindful of calling in that greatness. You know, I think it's 100% correct. Um, we need to make sure that we are building our team up and uh, it, we don't let them build or we don't let them go out and adventure. They're never going to build themselves up. And how is that going to look? I mean, nobody wants to say, well, I shouldn't say nobody. A lot of people want to move their self up in, in the companies that they work for. And uh, you're never going to let them be able to do that unless you give them some uh, some goals and some things to look forward to in their life and be able to build their self up. And you're going to be stuck in that same place forever yeah. if you if you choose to do that. And I, I'm going to be one of the worst examples. I mean, I was so set up on it had to be done this way. I have these contracts. I have these customers. They rely upon us and they do this. And what I really found out that I didn't need to assign every contract. I didn't need to take every phone call. I didn't need to make sure this is happening. I realized that it ran just great. I mean, it really ran like we expected it to, but we feel like that shoe's going to fall off. And as you smaller businesses or bigger businesses or whatever else it is, you guys are going to realize that it will, it will 
it will tear you apart. You, you, you can't work 18 or 20 hours a day for 20 years and expect to be shiny and glowy when you go to work every day because it's tough. Your, yeah. your, your cup's not refilled, your pitcher's not refilled, and you have to refill your employees. So you come home mentally exhausted. You come home to your kids, your wife, or your family members, your dog. You know, everybody's like, holy shit, here comes the whirlwind when it's walking in the door. And you don't have to live that life. You don't have to live that life of always wondering what everybody's doing and what's going on. And listen, I still check in on our employees. I make sure they're okay. We have all these EMS trips. We have these ambulance trips going to sewer. And I'm always worried about how my team's doing when they get there. Hey, we text me when you get there so I know you're safe because we lose cell coverage. We lose tracking ability. We lose things like that. So it's important for me to know that my team is safe and they're good. It's not because they're not qualified to do it. It's not they're great paramedics and EMTs. It's, I want to make sure that they made it to the point A to B safely because if I haven't heard from them in two hours, we're going to be calling them on the radios. We're going to yeah. be calling other people up to make sure they're make checked sure up they're on safe. there because it's a lot of open road. It's 156 miles down the sewer from here. So I, I'm not doing it because I want to <clears throat> hover above them. I just want to make sure that they're safe and what their actions are and what they're doing. Um, and uh, that's for the lab in place. But like we were gone this week and shoot, I didn't talk to Stephen but two or three times. I think the whole week I talked to Sarah a couple times. Yeah. And, or my phone wasn't blowing up. They were taking care of things. And when there was something that they needed to ask a question about or whatever, they knew they were welcome to call us and ask us what's going on so we can help them because we want to build them up and where they're at. Really, there are aspects of the operation now that they know more details about than we do because they run the schedule. And that's okay. And that's really what we're trying to say is that whatever you need to do to keep yourself out of survival mode you must make that your goal. And keep your sanity. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, uh, I mean, survival mode, there is no room for optimization or for creativity. You're just like getting through the day. You're not thinking about how intentionally, what you're eating, how much sleep you're getting, uh, what your relationship status look like with your, your family and friends. Spouse. You're just like getting through. And we've gone through seasons, especially younger, where we literally like put in our mind that work was the most important thing in this season. And I can tell you that part of crossing over the bridge from a mom and pop organization is that you've got to let that limiting belief go because work is not the most important thing. It, yeah, you get fulfillment there, you, you get um, recognition there, but if you're not uh, filling your needs and other aspects of your life, then it will consume you. And um, there, there's so much more out there than that. And also being an example to your team. You don't want to be showing them that this is the bar that they need to work a uh, hundred hours a week in order to satisfy, like to, to compete with you. I mean, it's it's a, it's a all around like recipe for disaster. You said that mindset. It's like, why aren't they at work? Why aren't they doing this? Why aren't they going that? We're paying them really good money, but. When you really look at it, um, they can do that from sometimes abroad. Um, we'd like to have our employees in-house if they can, if they can be able to. The leadership team, we leadership want definitely demonstrating is. leadership. And the drivers, is. of course, have to be in then, so the GGMs. But we want them to have a work balance life also. And, you know, sometimes we have to push people at the door. You know, I'll take Roy's, for instance. You know, Roy works another full-time job, and he's one of our managers at EMT. And he's like, I want to be there, boss. I want to be there. I'm like, you need to spend some time with your family. You need to yes. get out of here. You know, and we, we, we push him out the door sometimes to let them know. But he just wants to please us and do such a good job and we understand that we we're, we're not asking him to put more hours in. we're not asking those team members and I'll tell you another example is a couple years ago we had a great year and it was just a banner year and we were sitting there talking Athena was uh she was taking a bath uh, and you were taking a bath and we were talking about how we can reward the employees on our management know. team I don't know where this is going but we sent our management team to Hawaii yeah. and we wanted to give them an all paid experience trip for the most part uh, for paying for their plane tickets. We gave them paid PTO on top of their PTO. We gave yeah. them a, a place to stay, a vehicle to use, a golf cart. We wanted them to have an experience that we have when we go on our trips. And they came back so refreshed. They came back so like appreciative of what that was because they probably wouldn't have treated themselves to a, a, a where we stay at and what we do yeah. like they would. 
and they were like, oh my word, I got to this house and it was absolutely amazing. They, we, the host met us, they got six days there. They got picked up in cars from our car service to take them to the airport. We got them picked them up from the car service from our, we took them to, uh, we got them a, a new Jeep and we got them excursions that they did on their own, but it was a, it was a great treat for them. And what, where I'm going with this whole thing is that we want them to have the downtime and have the memory then give them a thousand or fifteen hundred bucks each and say here here's your bonus or five thousand whatever and then it might they be go and like spend they, it on spend in, paying their bills or something their credit cards off they didn't have that experience where they they have something to look forward to now when we do it everybody's like i can't wait till next year are we doing this again yes, next year yes. can we set the dates up so i can set this up now i was able to invite my sister or my my sister's husband or they we didn't limit to how many people that went there that there was limitations on where the condo they see that but they were able to bring it up. Yeah, they could choose to connect with whoever they wanted to on yeah. that trip. We didn't give them any restrictions. We just said, we're going to pay for two airfare tickets, and then you can bring up to, I think it was six yeah. people uh, on your own and stay in the condo. And we're but the, beach. the point of it is, is that it's like setting this culture of restoration and this like, we're not saying that you need to like only work four days a week when when your position is a five day a week or or whatever whatever the requirements are, but it's valuing downtime and connection with your family or connection with your close friends, and that's that's the bigger piece here. And a lot of people did that, and sometimes they took their kids with them, or they just it was their husband and wife, or their girlfriend and boyfriend, yeah. and whatever it was, but they had time away from work and they didn't care about what was going on because it was all being taken care of by the other team members. And the beach is a um, nice so like reminder. <laughs> and you know, uh, something that is significant about this is that only one leader went at a time. Yes. So it, it didn't leave the company unbalanced and they chose which days based on seniority. But, you know, you and I differ a little bit on this, like, I, idea of, like, workplace balance. I, I don't believe that there is a, such a thing as, like, lifestyle and work balance. I think that you have to decide what your lifestyle is going to be and uh, what, what are the things that make you happy that you are on purpose with. There are, we happen to be running logistics and cars, but really... My purpose is to grow others. I, I know that intrinsically that that has just been something that uh, it lights my fire to see others growing and moving up into a higher self and a higher awareness of their skills and having a sense of pride and clarity around what it is that just lights them up and fanning that flame of what lights them up. and. It's, it's the same with our children as, as it would be with the team members. When I understand that maybe um, you're, you're not feeling as uplifted in this place, then we do some shifts around. And maybe you were hired in this position, but, but as we get to know you, we discover that, oh, you know, you actually look like you would thrive in this area and, and doing a move. And we've seen people just blossom into these like just happy and joyful individuals not that they were like unhappy and miserable but it's like a higher level you can see that that's better suited for them and we also seen that sometimes when we put people in different positions they didn't blossom as well as they could in yeah. a different positions so we said hey we're noticing that you're kind of showing up late or something exists is there something else we can do for you then they'll kind of explain their situation I'm like hey you know there's an opening position in hr or there's one in, in accounting and you know you really don't like to drive as much as we thought you did so how about this position and then uh, all of a sudden they just like when the thing says they blossom i can think of two or three employees that have just really took a position on because they really thought they wanted that but or they we... really needed a job and they thought that was the only way into yeah. the organization and we always try to move people around where they're best suited at so we look for that all the time absolutely and you know I think that it's really going to boil down to if you are uh, a business leader that you are like owning the responsibility that you have to keep yourself uh, having a cup that is overflowing because I mean Charlie mentioned the pitcher thing but really when your cup is overflowing it's flowing into other people. You have the patience, you have the kindness and just being mindful about 
oh my gosh, you know, I have to take care of myself. Like I preach that you're not allowed to talk smack about yourself and you need to treat yourself like you are your best friend. And I'm not saying this like selfish, like weird, scroogey, like uh, attitude. It's more of this like, hey, I got on a sleep last night. I I'm eating something good for my body. I'm taking some time out that refills my cup. Like Charlie's energized by being around everybody. And like, you can just see he, he will get going and he's just like, he gets really energized. Later on, he'll need to take a nap. But me, I spend time with a large group of people, especially in these conventions, and I gotta take like a 30 minute break just to recharge my batteries for a minute. I, I love being around everybody and learning new things and having the interaction, but I know that it just really depletes me. That's where the yin yin yang. I mean, it's yeah. uh, sometimes that you know she'll need that time off, and I can I can hold the conversation until she gets her charge her batteries recharged, and then she comes back, and then. I might need a nap because I've, I've exhausted myself because I've talked to so many people. But I, I, one of the things I like to do is stay connected with people. I mean, I'm still connected with people from elementary school and uh, yeah. teachers from elementary school and friends all the way through high school. And it's just one of those things is I like that connectivity. I like to... That is like a superpower that you have. Yeah. Like, I don't know how he just... I, I will put reminders on my calendar to stay in touch with friends that have moved away. Uh, like for instance, I have a girlfriend that moved away and I have a monthly reminder to just give her a call and check in with her even if I've heard from her that month. Charlie doesn't need those reminders. He spends a good amount of his morning and sometimes late afternoon, now that we're driving to the lake house, that's yeah. an hour, you've got all that time to just call people and check in and, and it's remarkable to me. When we were younger, I was like, man, can you get off the phone? But now I understand that this is just a valuable part of staying connected to his network. And that network is so precious to us because we have people from all over that um, we're in relationship with because he's so intentional about staying in contact. Whereas I, I'm more, um, my circle is, is, is more narrow I, I love to hear from people and to go to special events and to see others. It's just I don't have the bandwidth that you do, and so you really need to take over the Facebook page completely, I think. Which one? Just one of them, oh, besides okay. yourself. Okay. Well, you know, um, that's, I guess, just my DNA. I just like to know where my friends are, what they're doing, how they're doing. Like uh, Joe, uh, Joe from Sullivan's now. Oh, yeah. Joe from the, the Putter Shack now. Joe Romanowski. I love Thank Joe. you, Me Joe. Me and him just really, just really hit it off, and we were great. And when he was there, I mean, we took the birds there. We made friends with him, introduced him to a lot of people, and then we've kind of followed where he's gone. And then just out of the blue, when we haven't seen Joe or haven't talked to him in a while, we'll Well, we he moved out of state. He did move out of state. And he, you know, he worked for the Sullivan Corporation, and then... Uh, and then he worked for some other places, and we show up at the Spinning Wheels group in, in San Diego, and he's at Roy's at a place we're eating dinner at on the thing. Yeah, we he's didn't even a know. Time Andrew there, he's running all these Roy's restaurants, and we walk in the door, I'm like, Joe? And he's like, Charlie? And he's like, I wonder what Spinning Wheels was. And, I, you know, he's ran three of our Spinning Wheels now, and, uh, you know, then he's, I kept in contact with him, we go down to Arizona, we visit him, and he's running the Putter Shack now, and it's just awesome, yeah. great company just that's down Scottsdale. there. Yeah, it's in Scottsdale. Yep. If you haven't gone there yet, it's it's a miniature golf and uh, with on steroids. It's oh, neon. It's it it's was fun. I had a great time. Super fun vibe. Like, you tell me to go putters golf here or one of these putters places here, and it was like you know you hit the ball and it hits the hole and you go and it's not changed. There it was like it, it kept you involved. You had TV screens. Your ball your was electronic. Ball so is like it's like Bluetoothed to the the game. It's it's yeah. Something. Let you know. So it was really great. Food was there, and I got to catch up with them. We got to hear about what's going on with him and his wife, and it was just. It was really yeah. neat to be able to connect back with them. And it was just, uh, <clears throat> those are the things I look forward to when we go down to visit with friends and things like that. And seeing Tavis and seeing Woodis and yeah. talking to Gibbs on the phone. You know, these are all guys that we keep in contact with down there. And Sean, of course, one of my best friends. We talk hey, almost every day, but you know, it's just everything going on with our lives and their kids and their family and how they're integrated with us and how their kids come up and visit us and they take vacations with us. And, you know, that's, that's where I like to be. You know, that's, that's my connection with uh, our friends and our family. So, But all telling you this, you need those things in your life or you need what you need in your life to reconnect with your 
inner self or your friends or your family or just downtime so you can come back your best for your employees in your work. You have to be in relationship with others. Tell them your struggles. You have to have those core that core group, maybe it's just a couple people, two or three, and they just know what you're dealing with. They know, um, they know where you're at, and and just get it off your chest because we spend a lot of time, especially as uh, industry leaders and business leaders, where we've got this like mask of everything is just great and we're putting on this happy face for the team and we're bringing the energy and it can be kind of lonely at the top and having those individuals and, and if you don't have that individual at the very least get yourself a personal life coach that can coach you through things that maybe you're off track with. I mean there's been seasons of my life where I've had different types of coaches for different things and one of them if I knew I was in a in a tough season like I had a personal coach that was just focused on making sure that I wasn't cheating on myself and what I mean by that is compromising the integrity that I had for others or that keeping my head straight when I started to like get off track there's been other times where it's just been strictly business coach and we're focused on, uh, or accountability partner, where you're just focused on achieving these goals within your organization. But the point is, is get an outlet and make it somebody that you can trust that's giving you sound advice and preferably someone who's in that entrepreneurial space so that they can relate to some of the things that you're going through and give you some sound advice or brainstorm with you on how to get to that next, cross that bridge over that challenge. Yeah, well, I quite a few people I talked to about that. Justin from Bolt and you know, like good friends, and they were best friends too, and Branton. There's just a lot of people that we deal with that we talk to on a daily day basis that we help go through their bill. And can really, I mean, it's just all these different people that we work with in businesses that we bounce ideas off of because, you know, like I said, our employees come to us and think we have all the answers and sometimes, we do have a lot of them, but we don't have them all. And so like, you know, John Schwartz, you know, another person that has his business, uh, you know, we bounce ideas off it, you know, uh, should I get this extra space? Should I do this? You know, what, who do we go talk to? Your employees, they don't, sometimes they don't know and they don't, they, they just want to see you build, build, build and do better and where they can do better too. But you have to have those persons that will tell you, hey, this is not a good idea. Yeah, like, hey, or you bumped your head. Like, yeah, are you crazy? Why do you want to take this on? You know, and some of it is like encouraging them to step into courage like I had one friend who called me and they were in a panic and I was like wait a minute like this is a sound business deal like you if you don't take this deal like you're crazy you need to like and it was just there was some fear around like pulling the trigger on it and it was and it was just that little bit of encouragement and they're like okay you're right I'm just overthinking this and I'm just gonna do it and they were just it catapulted them into a whole nother level of business and they're so grateful that they, I mean, it wasn't me. They pulled the trigger and they stepped into courage and did it. And sometimes that's what we need is just some encouragement to do do the thing we need to do. A lot of the time we know the answer. We just need somebody else to reassure us. Almost reassure all us. the time we know the answer. Uh, well, they and just so need do you. Us. And, and we just have to be the people to say, hey, that's a great idea. Or, hey, you know, just like she said, you bump your head. This is crazy what you're thinking about doing. And they just need to know it because they don't want to miss an opportunity or know that they don't want to put themselves in more of a, a pinch. And so we look at it and saying, hey, you know, sometimes just talking outside the box. But we're all great, great people are giving advice. And sometimes it's a little tougher for us to take the advice, yeah. but we want to hear it. I mean, and sometimes you have to hear the tough things to, to get to the next thing. <laughs> and you know when you're receiving information from another person that you know cares about you and loves you, that you you need to take that moment and go, okay, what, what do I need to know about this? What do I need to learn from this? Because they're not telling me this to upset me. Yeah. And that's the other piece is it's like being able to dial the ego down a couple notches and just go, I need to receive this. 
And sometimes you can do something with it, and sometimes you can't. And it's it's going to be wherever you're at in that journey. I call it like the tequila shot. It never tastes good, but the effects always happen. But sometimes you don't want to do it just because it's not good. So, But you need to hear it because we need to know. And then you have to have those core people there. Because sometimes Athena and I will not agree on everything, but sometimes we'll talk to somebody else and they'll say, hey, you know, she's right you need to make sure you're doing this or he's right and you need to make sure that we're doing this and sometimes we just need to hear it from somebody else that uh is not in your circle but it's in your your secondary circle uh, i see in, in your circle is just like they're trusted the, they're yes. in the circle of trust they're, they're the just not in the in the center circle i yes. guess yeah and, yeah and then that's tough sometimes you know you just you want to hear what you want to hear but you also want to not go down that rabbit hole <laughs> yeah and you know it's really this piece about embracing reality and is it true does it make sense and sometimes I, I mean there is a thing as deal heat where you just want the deal so bad and that's when you need to tap somebody and go oh my gosh and d it does this make sense and they're like whoa you want this way too bad you're, Our son, you're, Charlie he's <laughs> He's a perfect example of deal He He's like one of the smartest entrepreneur kids that we have. He's great and he wants it, but he sees the deal and he just can't see past it. And it's like, whoa, Charlie. Does it make sense? Yeah, you're going to spend $700 on this car to, to make $20 on it. It doesn't make any sense. You can spend a $15 card and make $8 on that card. So we have to talk about, but you want it so bad. We've all been in that position. We yeah. want it so bad that you're, you just can't see past it. And uh, sometimes we have to dial back but again sometimes we have to make them let that mistake happen before it's going to be able to grow them to the next level they need to be at well and i don't overlook it at like failure or mistakes i look at it like it's unintended outcomes like the intended outcome was x and this is the opposite of that so what can we do to get more along this side and i feel like that brings this uh it doesn't it's not as much of a negative context because I want the team members and uh, those close to us that are growing and learning through their journey of trial and error that they're, either way you win. Either you're gonna learn something because it was like an epic disaster and you're not gonna do all of these other things or it, it was a great success and you learned how to do it. So either way you win. Yeah. You know, Stephen, uh, our general manager, our manager that runs our operations manager, he. Uh, He'll do sense, and I'll, sometimes I'll ask him. I'll say, like, oh, "How come? How did you come to that decision? How did you make that decision?" He'll explain to me. I said, "Perfectly understandable." But when you're seeing it from the outside, it wouldn't be sometimes the decision we make. And he's like, "Was that the right video or not?" And I said, "There is no right or wrong. There's there is sometimes a different option that we could have done yeah. differently." And I just explained what I might have done differently and what it is. But his outcomes are usually are way better than ours. And sometimes we don't see past what we can't see. And sometimes he'll see see, see somebody and says, hey, this is gonna be a great fit for this position. I'm like, you know, so tell me why you think that's a good fit because I don't see that person on a day in, day out basis and he does. And so we trust his judgment. We trust him to help run our company. And so we sometimes have to just sit back and, and, and rely on his judgment and what he is there because his best interests are our best interest. Yeah, I, I would say that it's really about empowering the team members to do their job yeah. and part of his job is is aligning with the the people that he works with and he sees things that we just wouldn't see and so it's you you need to have people in leadership that you trust and that you want to work with and if Boots you're yeah if you're working with people and you don't want to work with them well the rest of the team isn't going to want to do that either sure. so what are we doing here yeah and then the, you see some other people that are just really shining and they, they started off as a DGM and then all of a sudden they're an assistant and all of a sudden they're a supervisor mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they're now they're, they're moving up. up to managers. And I was like, so how did this person become up to where we're going to bring them up to this new level and everything? And they'll tell us examples what's going on with it. I'm like, okay, well, let's try it. You know, let's run the experiment. Let's see how it works. You know, And if you guys feel that this is the way and this is one of, the, one of your key team members that you're going to have on your team, then I, I'm for it. You know, Let's see how it works. So. You know, and then the other piece is how are you approaching it uh, if it if it is an unintended outcome? You you absolutely need to make sure that you are coming at them with curiosity and not con con condemning them. Yeah. And like Charlie was saying, ask genuinely curious questions and being open. Tell me what tell me what led you to that or 
or tell me what your thought process was. And not not having this like the energy or what tone, were you doing? like Why that's were you the doing? opposite. Yeah, we yes. don't want that. You know, we want to say, hey, you know, I see that we made this decision and we did this and we had this person show up at this accident. How come you had that person go? What was going on? And then, you know, the, the final outcome is differently than when it first came across the board. So yeah. we, we talk about that and say, okay, well, you know, what would we do differently if we know in this thing? And then they tell us and say, hey, that's a great idea. But... Again, we don't know everything. We just have life experiences of 24, now all coming on 25 years of doing just this. Just with this business. We yeah. had a whole yeah, other... Yeah, other businesses that we yeah. had too. So this just gives us an idea of where we're at in this company and where yeah. we do it. And it's just not our employees that we help. We help other companies and other people throughout their journeys and going through their and bidding processes. And then the same thing we ask from them. Like, we don't know something. Then somebody might have a contract with this other company. How are they to work with? What's going on with this? How can we get it in? How can we work this? And we use our, our relationships that we have with other companies and say how can we make this better yeah you know and you know it just reminds me when we were meeting with joe uh last week at um the putter shack yeah. and he was like man i didn't realize uh that this this organization that i work for they don't have a process for everything and they're growing um, so quickly so fast so joe was given his experience where he worked for with other companies that have been in business longer and said, hey, I, I can come up with an SOP for that. I can come yeah. up with a thing for that. I'm like, wow, you know, but, you know, he brings a lot to the table because he's had a lot of organizations that he's worked for that have been around for quite some time. He has that experience. But but where I was headed with that oh, is sorry. that you mm -hmm. are, you, we, we have to make it up as we go sometimes. There are situations and things that we thought we never had to talk about or that are yeah. just nobody's ever dealt with in your particular industry and your organization. And it's, and you, you very much are stepping into courage a lot of time. And so it's like, if you know you can step into courage in that area, then you can step into this other space of taking responsibility for your journey. And, and we've given you many examples on how building these relationships absolutely pays dividends in keeping your cup full, connecting within business, but also like sharing your experiences as well, because there's gonna be someone else down the line that you meet that needs that encouragement too, that needs somebody to bounce something off because they're really, they're, they're not clear around what the decision should be. And so we need to band together as entrepreneurs and lift each other up. Yeah, I'll take it. For instance, George Jacobs. I mean, this guy's a legend in our industry. Yeah, he is. And he's been around for everybody. They call him the godfather. He reminds me a lot of my dad. And uh, not because of his entrepreneurship, but just the way they they are as a person. But, um, you know, George is great. I, I went to the door. I was nervous to talk to him because, you know, everybody was trying to get time from him. And he had a keeper there. And, you know, and, and he's like, hey, if you ever want to talk, here's my cell phone number. And I was like, I was so nervous to call him and ask him questions about that. But now I have this relationship with George that we text back and forth or we'll, we'll, we'll Facebook each other. Yeah. I can call George. And, you know, when we were going through the pandemic. Thank you, George. Yeah. When we were going through the pandemic. We were getting the receiving end. Like, because we were doing non-emergency medical transportation. We were doing mm -hmm. ambulance and stuff. And that was really thriving. And they were, like, calling us and asking us questions. Charlie, how can we get in this? What can we do? What can we do to make our people safe? And it was nice to be reciprocal to be able to give him back information that he did because yeah. he's been in the industry for so long, like 35 plus years, 40 years, that, you know, he has so much knowledge in this industry. But they were getting into a place that they didn't have a lot. And they were looking at it and saying, hey, they're doing so well in this. How, how can we get into this, too? And yeah. We were more than welcome to give them information and help them and do it because they're in Chicago. There were no competition to us. They were just a partner with us. But he is also, he's making deposits in that relationship. And we all need to be making deposits into these relationships because there's times where it just makes sense to go, hey, I'm struggling in this area, uh, whatever department, whatever the thing is, and you can reach out and and get off your island is basically what I'm saying. It's it's sometimes all it takes is just this little bit of encouragement to like get us through the next day. I remember when when I first stepped into operations management for the company, stuff was happening all the time. We were very much in this reactive position instead of proactive. And I felt like I was getting hit with a steamroller every single day that summer because just crazy stuff would happen. And I'm like, how is this even a thing? But it's just taking the time to, like, am I crazy? Talking to somebody, 
getting it off your chest. It's getting it out there. And some of us, we process our situations verbally. We just got to like get it out. And at the end of getting it out, the person might not have said anything to you and you've gotten it out and you know yeah. what to do. You know, Athena made a good point on the deposits and withdrawals. Um, just like your bank account, you can't make withdrawals with money you don't have. And the deposits we put into are our friends, our relationships, our, our employees, our team members. We're, we're putting lots of deposits in them. When I say deposits, knowledge, trust, things that are going on with them so we can get them to the next level. And our, depo our withdrawals for them is to them have them run our company and help it make it smooth and our transactions are smooth and everything that we have. That is our withdrawals from them is we're getting back from them everything we put into them. And, and sometimes, you know, it's a little unfair. We get more back from them than we put in. And the same way it goes back first, vice it, versa. It goes, it's like yeah. ebb and flows, kind of yeah. like water. And, you know, the, the key, though, is that they're, they're coming to, they're enjoying what they do. They're feeling uplifted. They're feeling like we trust them, that, they're, that they can do anything that they decide they want to do. And it's, it's like an empowerment piece where we just want to pour into them and then they pour into the community, into the customers. And it's this reciprocal wave of, of like positive energy that just flows. And that's really the space that we want to continue everything moving in. Is, um, and it all starts with us making sure that we're straight because if you and I aren't straight, then our kids aren't straight. Then the work isn't straight. We haven't been straight sometimes. I mean, you know, sometimes it's difficult. Uh, we had another person just ask us today, how does it work with your wife and your husband? You know, how does that work go back and forth? And sometimes, you know, it's, if we're really good, everything's good. But if we're not good, it, it, sometimes it, it makes it tougher for everybody. And, and they realize it. So, you know, we got to be solid. Again, filling our cups up, taking time off, going to these conventions, going to these things that makes us better. We only make the company better. And uh, that's, that's our whole goal. And, and I think, you know, if there was, if I was to answer the question, like, what are the keys to working in a marriage partnership? It's really like you have to decide that the relationship is worth more than you being right. I feel like we <laughs> fell into that trap over and over and over again uh, where it was like, no, but I'm right about this. And it's like you defend yourself. And then there's this division, and then there's kind of like these walls that go up, and it's really like how do you keep your heart open when all you, you, we found that we really had the same goal over and over and over again, but sometimes we just couldn't see through the forest. Nope. And She's then, speaking Spanish, I was speaking Japanese, but we're asking for the same thing. <laughs> you know, there was one season where we would go meet with this guy, and all he would do is spend 45 minutes showing us how close we were on the same page, yep. like over and over and over again, just this constant reminder. And I know that different people have different routines and, and resources at different times in their life, but be real about what you think you need. And if you need somebody to call you and ask you, like, four personal questions every morning so that your head is straight or you need to subscribe to whatever to hear that uplifting information for, for the first 15 minutes of your day, like do whatever it takes to fill your cup and keep yourself straight and to keep your mind right because at the end of it, it's all a mindset game and you're, it's 100% a mindset game. And the way you think about it is going to dictate how you behave every single time. So. And it's realizing it. You know, when you're doing a mistake, you're making something, you own it. You take it, you own it, you take ownership of it, you apologize, you make it better, you try to set yourself on the path that you're not making the same mistakes. And I, I, I make those ones sometimes, and today I made one, and I, I told Athena immediately about it, and just how I felt bad about it, because I could have reacted differently to it, but I, I, I put myself in the old patterns, and I wanted to get mad and, and voice where it was, where I could have done something totally different, and it probably wouldn't have, it would have had a way better outcome. Yeah, you know, and that's the thing is it's you, we do have patterns that we, we fall into in these cycles and it's like deciding is that pattern serving me and is it filling my cup? Am I taking accountability and responsibility for my, my journey and how I'm showing up? It's not just the entrepreneur journey. I mean, it's, Personal it's, 
one of my goals is to be um, having this line of congruency no matter where I'm at, whether I'm the same person who's talking to the kids as I am the same person that shows up for work, I'm the same person that's showing up for the ladies book club study. Uh, I mean, it's just completely the same person. The congruency is what I shoot for because anything outside of it, it's like I, I want to maintain that authenticity in every relationship that I connect with so that they're like, oh, like sh I know Athena wouldn't, wouldn't do that or, oh yeah, Athena would say that. Um, and I think that when you're striving to have that authenticity, it, it puts you in a trustworthy position. And then I think more people will open up to you about things that are going on in their life, like our employees. You know, they trust us enough that they'll tell us something or something's going on there, and we'll give them advice and help them get through those channels. And that just makes their life better at home. So when they come to work, they're better as a person too. You know, and it, it's. Uh, I guess why we tell you all this stuff is because the struggles that we went through, you don't really have to go through. Um, you don't have to, uh, my great saying, you don't have to wait for the elevator to hit the bottom floor before you're out, you have to get off the elevator. You know, you can get off anytime you want to. And the elevator's the crazy elevator. You know, you don't have to get off the bottom floor and then work your way back up. You can get off at any floor you want to. You just have to set your mindset. And, uh, you know, I always say this story about, uh, you know, this guy got this car and he drives this beautiful car and he saved all his life. He has this beautiful Corvette and some kid throws a rock at the car and puts a big dent in it. He's gonna go kill this kid. And he's so angry and so mad. And find out the only reason this kid threw a rock is his, kid, his brother got hit by a car and he was trying to get somebody to stop it. Nobody would stop for him. He immediately went from angry and mad to compassionate to take it through the kid in the car and Ran drove him the to the hospital. And he was bloody and his car got all screwed up. But he realized what the kid did. He didn't have to go through any of these things. He immediately took that off and took that flip the emotion switch. and flipped the switch to mad to compassion. That's the whole elevator speech, too. You don't have to wait till it gets so bad you have to wait for it. You, you can change your mind and your mindset to it, and it takes humility and it takes some uh, courage to come up and do it, but you can change it any time. And the same thing with your employees, the same thing with your work life, the same thing with your home life. You can decide to make that change. And, you know, it doesn't sound like impossible, and I can tell you it took me a long, long time to figure this out, but as, and I'm still down this journey, but you can change it any time. And... Uh, Work is not sometimes your most important thing. It's a job. It's a venture. It's a, your company, your wife, or whatever else it is. But at the end of it, you need your family. You need your downtime. You need your uh, your fun time. You need to have a purpose to why you're working so hard. And sometimes it's not just the purpose of working. It's you need to have that downtime. And I look forward to more downtime. I look forward to more of having people run our company and do things with. We always want to have a pulse of it. We love it. We love our company. We built it from the ground up, but it's not the most important thing. Well, and you know, I think that you, you hit it there, that being a part of something special is really what we love. We love seeing people grow and, and raise up, and we love being of service to the community, and, and there's a sense of purpose and pride around all of that. But at the end of it, you're not going to get to these other spaces if you don't decide that one of your most important relationships is the relationship that you have with yourself. That has to be something. Like I noticed right away when you started taking better care of yourself, you were just happier. And, uh, and I appreciated that, that season where you were just like, I've decided I'm season. doing this, <laughs> I'm doing that. Um, I'm, and um, it just, it was like this uplifting, powerful thing. And I'm not saying again that you need to be selfish and, and it's not selfishness, it's, how am I being a good friend to myself? So, it's awareness. It's more. I think it's more awareness. Yeah, awareness. awareness is good. Yeah, we're, we're 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 being aware of our surroundings and what's going on and what we're doing, and we need to make sure that we're uh, we're healthy. And our kids, you know, 15, 16 years old, you guys can know how much struggle that can be. You know, that's a whole hormone change, and everybody's right, and we're we're stupid. <laughs> and we don't know nothing. You know, especially about business. Millions, our companies and businesses, but that you know, if you just did this, you'd be much better. And, yeah. You know, you just look at that and say, okay, well, I remember when I was 15 and 16, yeah. I thought I knew it all too, and our parents were very smart and 
you know, they hear about this stuff, but, you know, we just want to uh, help them and help everybody else. And Sometimes. I'm hoping you're getting something out of this, this podcast because we want to just let you know what struggles and what stuff we have in our life yeah. and how we can make, hopefully make some of your decisions a little bit easier. Hmm. Yeah. If you have some questions, you're more than welcome to ask us questions about what's going on and we're pretty much an open book on a lot of things. And Yes, we are. And if you're new to the podcast, we'd love it if you would subscribe and just check us out every week. We're grateful that you came to visit us. This is episode 12. Yeah, episode dozen. Yeah. Double digits. One, two. All right, thank you guys. Bye. Have a good day.